Welcome back to Switch to Linux. I thought we'd do another outdoor video today. Uh, been about a week since we've done one of those. Uh, last time I was in the wonderful place of Quartzsite. Now we are over um, on Indian Bread Rock. Um, and uh, what I want to talk today about is we want to do a shorter, more condensed video of the live stream that we had uh, the other day because I realize some of you may not want to sit for an hour bantering discussions. You want the information and cold, hard facts. And so we're going to summarize uh, that uh, hour-ish long video before we were interrupted by the cow. Yes, it happened. <laughs> and um, uh, I want to just go ahead and summarize that video for those that don't like the live stream, but you would still like to know our tips on switching to Linux cold turkey uh, in a condensed form. Now, uh, this is important because some of you, uh, and I, as I said in that other video, I recommend you take your time, you slowly move around. Um, it could take years in some cases. Some people recognize that, that uh, you can't even switch to Linux, and that's what I want to do here. I want to recognize not everybody can switch to Linux 100%. We want to acknowledge that. Um, but there's also times you start looking up, like, I had this oh no moment when I first saw the, the writing on the wall with Windows 10. I said, hell no. Um, and I didn't not like Mac OS, not that Mac OS is any better. And so I said, well, you know what? I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and start slowly switching to Linux and uh, doing that kind of stuff. And so um, if you can take your time, that's fine. But if you get to the realization that, holy crap, I've just realized a lot of stuff is going on and I do not like it. And you're saying, I really just need to switch to Linux cold turkey. I want to give you four basic tips on doing that. And these, again, if you watch the live stream, this is just the summarized version of that. We had a number of panelists on there that all gave uh, various ideas about this. And we had some bantering back and forth on the comments. If you like that kind of stuff, that video is linked down below. If you don't, you want the short one, this one is for you. So if you are ready to switch to Linux cold turkey, here's a few things uh, to mention. Number one, it is not exactly the same as other operating systems. In fact, no operating system is exactly the same. If you are a Mac guy, in fact, I remember, let me just go this way, from Windows to Mac. When I actually first got a Mac in my office just to be able to QA things on a Mac and stuff, I had no earthly idea how to install software. I'm like, I'm not looking up things up on, in, on the internet. Like, how do you install software on a Mac? Like, who, who thought of downloading a DMG file, double clicking it, and then dragging and dropping it into a, into a folder? What? <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's figure it out. Um, obviously, your um, phone operating systems are much the same. They're not exactly the same. Windows, um, of course, Windows is moving towards more of a Mac-like model where you have a Windows store. They're trying to make it harder to install things from the internet, which is good for security because right now uh, we there are a lot. You have to be really careful uh, with that slow methodology to say, hey, you can install GIMP, you can install Audacity, you can install LibreOffice. Right now, if you are a Windows user looking to switch to Linux, you have to be very, very, very careful because people are using advertising and uh, what would be called a, um, a typo squatting campaign. And they're putting together websites that look close to legitimate free and open source application websites, but they are distributing malware through them. And then they're running Google ads. So if you do a search for, uh, we just covered in the weekly news roundup, uh, GIMP was in the list, Audacity was in the list, Blender was in the list, and there were a few other ones as well. If you do a search for these, you might find a Google ad at the top of your page saying, hey, Audacity, and you're like, oh, that's what I was looking for. And you click on the ad instead, and that might not take you to Audacity. That might take you to some other website that is spreading malware. Well, that's a problem. On Linux, it's not, because all of that software is involved in the prepackaged repositories, which are audited and vetted by the people who make the Linux distributions. So you're not going to get that type of malware. So 
Uh, the point is of this first principle is that the operating systems do believe uh, do behave differently. Uh, it's like um, you don't download a .exe file or .msi file as you would in in Windows and, and execute it. Uh, you would do something different. Now there might be uh, deb files if you're on a Debian base that are very similar, an RPM file on Fedora or OpenSUSE that are very similar. Um, and then of course there is the flat pack and the snap and the app image models as well. The point is, is that Linux is a little bit different. So don't get super frustrated that you can't figure out how to install software. You need to do a little bit of work because it behaves a little bit differently in some respects. Our second point is every operating system has limitations. If you if you hit a wall in Linux, you say, well, this just sucks. No, it's just you might have found one of the limitations that Linux has that Windows doesn't. But conversely, you have just learned habitually how to deal with the limitations of Windows and you just didn't think about it. And that may not be something in Linux and it might be for a security reason. Windows, it is easier to install malware because the security model of Windows is not as tight as the security model on Linux. And so you have to be uh, cognizant that every operating system has its own limits. Of course, Windows basic limit, you're stuck with the operating system as they want you to use it. Uh, then these are bad limits. You're stuck with a... Uh, you're stuck with a um, uh, a start menu, a software store, and other applications constantly pushing ads on you. Well, you're not stuck with that on Linux. You're stuck with a certain UI. You're not stuck with that on Linux. But there are going to be a few limitations. I know just off the top of my head on, uh, on Windows, you right-click a video file, you get a tab with all the information about the video. Most Linux distributions don't have that. Um, so that's one of the limitations. So you have to be a little bit more creative in looking up the specs on a video file, for example. Uh, these are some of those limitations. Does it mean it's worse? No, it just means that they are different. And each one of the primary operating systems do, do have its own limitations. You have to be cognizant of that. Be aware that if you hit a, a wall, it might be something you don't know how to get around it, or it might just be one of the legitimate limitations. All right, the next one is uh, how to install software differently. We actually talked about this briefly. Uh, again, on Windows, you just go and download it. Uh, from the internet if it's not in the Windows Store. The Windows Store is becoming bigger and more robust, so maybe this is something that's going to be disappearing a little bit. Um, but uh, the fact is here on Linux, uh, nearly all the software you need is either going to be in the repository, which means it's it's good and audited. It's going to be a flat pack, which hopefully has been audited somewhere around the time. You do have snaps. You do have app images. Uh, those are a little bit more controversial. Well, the snaps are more controversial in some circles. It's about a 50-50 split. I'm in the camp. I don't like snaps. I think they're problematic. Um, but there's a lot of people that say, wow, I really like snaps. I'm okay. That's okay. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna judge somebody. I'd rather you switch to a Ubuntu and get off of Windows, even though um, I don't like some of the direction they're going either. But that's okay. It's a step in the right direction. Um, and uh, but you do have to understand that Linux does install software differently, as does Windows and as does Mac. They're all different. You just need to figure out those different trends. And the last point I want to make on cold turkey switching to Linux is learn the alternatives. Okay, learn the alternative software mostly. Uh, and I told this embarrassing story. It's it's so shameful now. When I first switched to Linux, I'm trying to figure out how to get my Adobe Creative Suite working. I actually tried to figure out how to get Microsoft Office installed on Linux through Wine. And I'm like, this kind of sucks. Like, and then I realized, dude, LibreOffice is better than Microsoft Office. <laughs> if for nothing else, the fact that going into this down recession right now, uh, Microsoft Office is still pulling money out of your account every Every month or every year. LibreOffice is free, yo. And uh, frankly, it does 99.9% .9 of everything you're going to need to do in Office. There are good alternatives for most of the uh, Adobe packages. Of course, this is one of those cases if you are in a work environment that 100% requires you to use uh, Photoshop, you're probably going to have to keep a Windows or a Mac machine around to run Photoshop. It's not going to run well on any other emulation. However, 
if it's Microsoft Office, you can generally get around that with LibreOffice or some of the other alternatives like OnlyOffice and things like that. But you want to take some time to learn the alternative software that is out there. And those are my tips. The wind is picking up, so we're going to wrap this video up here. Thanks for watching, everybody. Jump on over to the website, switch to linux.com, newly redesigned. We also are now on a uh, Matrix channel at Switch to Linux. The link for that is in the footer under the social media on the website. So you can find links to that channel over there. And uh, with that, guys, thanks for watching, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy... Switching to Linux.